Hi. It's April 6th, and this is an exciting time of year for us in Minnesota. Uh, we're a bit behind everybody else, but this is the beginning of the grass growing season. I realize you don't see a whole lot out there, but we do have blades of grass coming up in the pasture here. And the purpose of this video is going to be to talk about how we handle this part in the year where the sheep or cattle are going to want to break out and gobble up every last blade of grass that they can find. But before we get into that, I just want to point out behind me, you see the residue from bale grazing throughout the winter. I just want to point out that the sheep spent the entire winter out here, or out in many different pastures, grazing bales of hay. And this is the residue that they've left behind. Under those piles of residue, um, or one reason they look so large, is because there's actually quite a bit of snow and ice underneath those piles yet, and there will be for a while. So you can see there's like uh, probably a good eight inches of snow and ice under this pile of hay. So actually the hay itself is only about four inches but come the end of June, the grass starts growing through these piles and by August there'll be two or three times more grass growing there than anywhere else in the field. So we put up with the mess for a while, but it turns out this is a fabulous way to feed the soil. I'm gonna talk about bale grazing more in a different video. But for now, let's talk about how we deal with uh, controlling livestock this time of year when they really wanna get out and start grazing. See, we actually have blades of grass coming up. Hi. My answer to livestock control in spring green up is a secure yard to hold the animals in where you feed the hay for just a brief period of time. Um, April 6th, the sheep went in here, I don't know, about 10 days ago. Uh, it's, uh, we feed the hay in here for just two or three weeks until there's enough grass to start grazing. And in the early grazing, we may go out and graze a paddock and then come back here for a few days just to not overgraze the pastures. This is my fourth rebuild. And I've got to tell you a little bit about what I've done before. I used eight strands of high tensile wire. Some of those were electrified. I found that to make a very poor fence because uh, we often keep rams in here in the summertime and anytime I brought a flock of ewes through, rams would dive through the wires regardless of the electricity. Um, the other thing is when you have a novice border collie in there, they might put too much pressure on the sheep and they run through the wires. So it just wasn't very satisfactory. When I had to build it again, and, and keep in mind this is over 40 years and these current fence posts seem to only last about a decade or so. Um, the second rebuild was uh, woven wire, high tensile woven wire topped with a couple of electric wires. And again, that had a lot of problems. It was hard to keep that wire tight. We have problems with the clay heaving our posts and um, we had sheep, as the fence aged, we had sheep crawling out underneath the wire. So that wasn't satisfactory either. Also, it was not canine tight. If our dogs could jump out of there, you can figure that coyotes and wolves could jump in. So here we are with our fourth rebuild. And what I decided to do was use these welded wire panels. And these are five foot high. And although it's totally possible for any predator to climb up over these panels, they're not very likely to when there's some dogs on the inside that are going to keep them out. Um, the other thing is I do ultimately plan to top this off with uh, electric wire or, or maybe an offset on the outside. When the sheep are put into this uh, facility for the spring green up, we just feed the bales in here just like we would out on pasture. 
that hay does get, uh, residue does get scraped up and put into a pile to compost, which you can see over here in the corner. And we use that for our garden. This facility also includes feed bunks. And we use these for those times where maybe we feed a protein pellet if the hay quality is really poor, uh, feed alfalfa pellets and whatnot. Now, this is also used in the early winter for any slaughter lambs that we still have. Uh, in the event we get too much snow and we have to feed them hay, they come into here and they get alfalfa pellets in the bunks and hay out here in the field. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have some ideas that you would like to share on how you control your animals during spring green up, or if you have a different way of handling the spring greenup, please share your ideas below. Thank you.